and welcome back. We are talking about this book, The Path to Kaliech. The book by William Odongo Omamo helped to be put together by Bob Omamo, who is here on behalf of his father, the late William Odongo Omamo, who passed on April 2010. Can you imagine now? It's 12 years in and the book is now here. Yeah? You think he would like this book? I think he would. Yeah. I, was I, he a critic of grammar, nini, what? He, he was. He, 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 he actually was. And if you read from when he was in Maseno, English was really, really yeah. taken seriously. And he won an award for English um, and was given an encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. If you remember when he left Maseno uh, High School back in the 40s. So he was someone who was very particular about English. Uh, he liked correcting uh, grammar mm -hmm. when we were speaking. Growing up, I remember, that's one thing I fondly remember. When I, I would say something the wrong way, he would correct me. Mm. Yeah, so to your question, yes, he was very particular about yeah. that. And I had to try do him justice yeah. with his book because uh, he tried. I mean, he, he didn't just try. He, he did an excellent job in putting his thoughts together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there was, tell me about something you found very intriguing or surprising when you were reading now his notes. Uh, there were many, many things uh, yeah. that, that I could find intriguing. One thing I could probably share is my father, when I was growing up, loved hunting. And um, when we were growing up, he was someone who owned guns. And he, he literally hunted for, for sport, you know. Growing up, he would, you know, shoot uh, guinea fowls and all, in the farm. You know, there were licenses for that. Yeah, come from that era, yeah. Yes. There were licenses for that. So we grew up with lots of different types of, of game meat. Wait, shoot to eat? Yeah, you're, you're killing the vermin and it's food. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so Not to mount on the, <laughs> on the fence, TG, on the wall. Yeah, so okay. what was intriguing mm. about it, yeah. uh, with regard to the book, is that I realized that he grew up as a hunter. You know, I get to see that, uh, how they went for hunting expeditions. Mm -hmm. To the extent that my dad's peers, the guys who, who went to school, the pioneer generation of education in Kenya, there's a good number of them who got into golfing and, and you know, there were members of these clubs. But my, not, my dad never got engaged in any of that. He maintained what he was doing from childhood, which was hunting. Mm -hmm. But now, with a, different, with a different tool, a gun, back then they would use bows and arrows, I mean mm. spears, yeah. and, and they would use uh, uh, rungus, but now when he grew up, he was someone who used a gun. So for me, the fascinating part is that I got to see where his love for hunting came from. Came from. Mm. You know, and, and it was actually surreal putting it together. I'm like, this, this is a guy who really loved uh, the sport of hunting. Yeah. yeah. So that, was, that would have been like his hobby. That yeah. was his hobby. That was his hobby. That, that was, that, I found that quite intriguing. Yeah, at how f long he had done it. What, what do you think his highs were? And what do, you, what do you feel was his lowest moment? Hmm. I think for me his high, his high, even though he was in various ministries as, a, as minister, his high was when he was appointed minister for agriculture and livestock development. Mm -hmm. Because he had been a pioneer agriculturist in Kenya. The first Kenyan. Yeah, he had been Bumias. He, he, so he was the very first Kenyan to acquire a degree in agriculture. Mm -hmm. The very first one to acquire a degree in, I mean, a master's degree in agriculture economics. Um, and in this case here, there were two degrees. There's a mas another master's uh, in economics, but with a concentration on uh, extension, agricultural extension uh, methods. So when he eventually becomes minister for yeah. agriculture. So this was his forte. That was, he, he loved that and he practiced it. You know, he practiced what he had studied and now given the chance to teach it now to Kenya and to lead that ministry was what I could say was his highest moment. Yeah. Now from the laws, uh, the laws, of course, there were some election losses that I think were painful. I would probably say the 1988 election. Yeah was his lowest moment. Uh, I get to know this from, from interviewing my mother, my late mother. My mom just passed away a month ago. Yes. 
Yeah, Pole. but she was an integral part also in this mm. book because she filled in lots of gaps for me when I was putting the book together. Mm -hmm. And she told me that 1988 was a very, very low moment for my father when he was rigged out of the Mulolongo election. Mm -hmm. He contemplated quitting politics. Yeah, because that, that wasn't just about loss, it was also betrayal, backstabbing. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it was so, yeah. you could say that was his lowest moment to the extent that, you know, as someone retiring, contemplated retiring, he said, let me start penning down my memoirs. You know? Yeah. This is yeah. how easy it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed you also had some newspaper cuts, you know. Yes. You, you had plenty of those ones, like in the, in the house? So, um, like I mentioned, my father had been trying to write this book here for years. He was meticulous in his work. He, he had different files of newspaper cuttings. Yeah, things about him, he, what he's yes, done. Yes, things about him. He had, had, he had secretaries who had gathered this information over the years, in the 70s, in the 80s, when he was in uh, public life, especially when he was a minister. Mm -hmm. So each file had a different year written to it. You know, there's 1970, 1971. Wow. Yeah, so I was just fortunate enough to have kept many of these files and they didn't uh, get lost. So that's how... So I how tedious was this? It was definitely a very tedious job. Even for me, selecting what to put mm -hmm. in the book was a tedious thing. I had to go through every file and see the story yeah, this that's in be, it, yeah. that this, 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 this can work in the book. Yeah, but it was stuff that he had gathered himself over the years. So this is stuff. There's these super cuttings from the 70s. Mm -hmm. And that is stuff that I, I treasure now. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll digitalize all these things because... Mm -hmm. Uh, the path to Kalich is not over. Even the release of this book is, is not the end of, of it. There's a lot more about the man because what he, he had a world view and it's, it's something worth keeping. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a very commendable thing that you, his son, mm -hmm. is able to keep him alive this way. Mm -hmm. You know, because books are timeless. Indeed. Yeah. You know, they tell stories beyond our generations, beyond our times, beyond... Even, even, for, even for the sake, even for your own family, for grandchildren who are to come and what who want to, they, it's easily reachable and you know you can get a few things and, and get to know. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's very, it's very interesting. I even read his notes for 1988, the guys he called, solid supporter, yes. the guys he called. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he didn't forget even the people who just stood by him. Yes. I thought that's really nice. You know, a lot of people have forgotten yes. on the sidelines in terms of that. It's true. You know, in campaigns. Yeah. How different is it for you looking at the way we are doing politics now and the way he did politics then? Uh, it's very different. Very, very different. Um, the, let, let me say the independence generation of politicians, a good number of them, uh, we no longer have people like them right now in Kenya. Very few can match that generation because, first of all, to start with, you realize that my father was a technocrat. You know, they're the pioneer technocrats of, of Kenya. Mm -hmm. These people were nationalists. They, they thought about Kenya and not about tribe. They, ne they never thought about the individual thing, but about what they could do for, for Kenya. So in terms of that, the nationalist, that nationalist mindset is, is missing, you could say, in our current crop yeah. of leaders. So they didn't say to acquire billions of acres, you know, Exactly. You know, in his case, his was service. You know, he, he, it was service to, 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 to the nation. That was what was his driving force. You know, you realize from the book when he was at Edgerton and he realized he's done so much for Edgerton. He cannot do any more. Whatever he tries was getting gaps. That's why he felt, now let me join politics so that he could serve Kenya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even more. And that's why he eventually leaves Edgerton. And Edgerton at that time was paying him, was, was paying him well. You know, he was, he, was, he was being paid very well. Yeah. He was comfortable. But he did want to rest on his laurels. He did not want a scenario where he's at Edgerton and Edgerton cannot become a university. He had offered it to be a campus for, 
for, uh, as, a, as a university. Once once that was was stopped, he felt he's done what he can mm -hmm. for Egerton. Now let me look for another challenge. Service to the nation as an MP was the next thing, and you can say the rest is history. He gets appointed as Minister for Natural Resources, and his work speaks for itself. Yeah, I must say. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, at some point he got very unwell. Yeah. Now, between the time when he got better and the time when he passed on, how did he change? Like, what did he prepare for the end? Was he, as a man, how was he like? Yeah, um, my father, you could say he prepared. He, he was, I could say he was a very wise man. And probably the reason why we don't have stories of uh, his large family fighting because he prepared us early enough even distribution of his wealth and you know polygamy is a very big story in his in his in his book mm -hmm. but he was able to put a polygamous family together and to stop us from having any drama even after his passing yeah that's rare and that's a very for a politician very but it's something that you yeah. would say he prepared us for and yeah we we owed him as much you know we didn't want to you know for the respect we had for him uh, we had to just stick to what he he his principles and what he wanted yeah yeah we have we are at a point in our time where the younger generation are more and more saying they don't want to scare my way as a money you could hear it even in the last election yes you know yes ah. he's on my brother 1960 <laughs> How do you think we can address that going forward? Because you know we are only as good as yeah. our past. Yes. You know. You know the, the younger and generation needs to be mentored more. And um, books such as these need to be shared more and more. That's why I definitely plan to, to engage public, I mean, um, universities, you know, institutions of education. Mm -hmm. So that books such as these can be in their library so that the younger generation can learn from our history because you know it's only if you learn from our history that you, you will be able to succeed because there's so much information in these books that uh, can help can help the younger generation mm -hmm. yeah because you could say that it's misplaced that it's a misplaced sort of thinking where people say we do not want to hear about the past mm -hmm. the past is what shapes the future. Yeah. Yeah, it is what shapes the future. Yeah. So what's next for the path to Kaliach? You said it's not over. It's not over. Um, so I intend to launch it, to have a big launch in uh, December. Uh, there'll be more details of that. The official case. launch. The official launch. So we are reading it unofficially. Now it's unofficial. <laughs> it's, it's, we are reading yeah. it now because I released it yeah. to the public in the uh, form of serialization mm -hmm. in September. Mm -hmm. But uh, the launch is coming up mm -hmm. and it has to be Kali H. You yeah. know, it, What's been the response like, by the way? The response has been good. Um, the response has been fairly good. Uh, it was always going to be a challenge uh, selling the book of a man who, an autobiography, yeah. who passed on 12 years ago, you know, for every time a good number of people realize that it's actually been 12 years they get surprised yeah but then i realized that it was his persona i showed it to my boss this morning he remembers very well yeah he's a Kali H. yes it seems the name really caught on I, I have deliberately avoided talking about the why because i want people to read the book yes you know indeed and indeed. get to know the reason behind the name yeah yeah the reason behind the name is is in the book yes <laughs> <laughs> And it, it answers a lot of questions, misconceptions about the, uh, yeah. the name. Yeah. Yeah. His peers, have you had a chance to talk with any of his peers from that time and see what uh, they think? A good number of his peers are, are quite old. I'm meant to be reaching out to them. There's, there's, there's even one who I researched and realized is still alive. Uh, his friend from India, uh, Daniel Midoli. Oh, really? Daniel Midoli is still alive and I intend to do a tour to Uganda to, to look for To him. find him, yeah. yeah I have to, so I want to walk in the footsteps of Kali H mm. with regard to you know certain personalities. So that is one person that uh, I intend to look for. And there are others, you know, his peers who are mm. still alive, like Professor Bethel Ogot. Yes. Those are people who I'll be reaching out to yeah. shortly. How important do you think it is for people 
of, you know, who are in places like your dad was, to write their, their memories as they go along? It's very important because to some extent I feel they owe the country that uh, responsibility to, so that people can be able to fill in a lot of gaps because there are always lots of gaps in, in stories. So it would be good for the public to know uh, their thoughts on issues, to know well, what the real story behind a story was. Mm -hmm. And um, in my dad's case, I must say, he tried to do that, even though, unfortunately, he passed on before he released his memoirs. But the generation of his time, and uh, slightly after his time, should strive towards releasing their books. Because Kenya can really, really uh, get so much from the wealth of experience that yeah. they had. You know, nowadays they can even do a YouTube video. Indeed. They yes. Can, they can even talk. You know, you don't have to write. You can yeah. talk. The thing will type. Yes. I mean, technology has made it easy for people to live stories. There's no reason why they shouldn't. It's true. It's true. You know, so when we talk about, I don't know what happened in 2019, 90, and we can say, okay, so and so said this was the thing, the thing, you know. Yeah. Also, let us know why we are where we are. Yeah. Because some of the history in this book is very intriguing. In fact, in terms of even uh, history of even your culture. Yes. You know? Yes, the Luo culture it's is very rich. It's very rich. Yeah. He, he really delves into, into that. Yeah. Yeah. To get to know what was what and why it was like this. Yeah. You know? True. Even the guys at Muhoroni, there are some guys there who do not know it was carved out the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know the, 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 the interesting story <laughs> of the one, one million acre scheme. Yeah. Yeah, and, he, and, and, and Kaliech was in the heart of that. Yes, right on center of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So back home there, what do they say? The villagers around him, the people, have they got a chance to interact with it? Yes, uh, a few of them, but the job is not done. Uh, like I said, I am about to do the official launch, and it's at that time that you could say that you I will sambaza it machinani to spread your wings all over, yeah, mm, as much as possible. Yeah, I hear you. Where do you find the book, Bob? Uh, the book is available in uh, lots of bookshops uh, countrywide, textbook center. Uh, which has quite a number of... Yeah, fancy that. Yeah. Yeah, hey, so, like a... <laughs> <laughs> so textbook center has it. Yeah. Prestige bookshop in uh -huh. town has it. Mm -hmm. um, Bookstop Yaya Center has it. Then uh, online stores like Nuria, NuriaKenya.com yeah. yeah. also sell it. And the good thing about Nuria is that they deliver to your doorstep if you order through them. And then uh, Rafa Books as well has it. Yeah. So um, anyone else who would need anything to do with the book can also reach me on bobomamo254 at gmail.com. bobomamo254 at gmail.com. In your writing and putting compiling, you know, you added a few things. And then, of course, your compilation that you did. Eh? Mm. Was there a point that you felt like it was overwhelming? Uh, it, was, it was a tough job, I must say. I mean, there were many sleepless you nights. You feel like... It, uh, this thing is not coming together. It's, I, I, I did. Know. I did. And for me, the, I think the biggest challenge was, I hope I'm not going to let this man down. That, that was always in the back of my head, that I know that uh, I'm doing a very tough job, and at the back of my head, am I making him proud? That was always in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And that could be overwhelming sometimes. When I would get stuck, you know, I don't know how to piece something together. That was, was challenging mm. and overwhelming. It wasn't just a complete run you did. You must have paused at some point. I did. I paused at a point. So these two and a half years was a time when I actually stopped for a while. Uh, in between this period, I, I actually asked myself, how would I go about it? And I eventually stumbled upon someone who helped me uh, move along with him mm -hmm. in editing the, the book. Ah. Yeah, that was in uh, the beginning of this year. We did a marathon job with, um, I, have, I have to mention his name, engineer Isaac Mutemi. Uh -huh. Between January and m end of May, June this year, the work we did together was... You're like, now, so the last month to Malaysia. Yeah, that was a work that I, I'll never forget. It, it was tough. And the back and forth that we had, you know, what words to use here, you know, delete this. Uh, I'll tell uh, engineer Kiluti, no, this doesn't sound like my dad. 
delete that word. That mm. it doesn't sound like him. We have to maintain his voice. Mm. So there was lots of that cha- those challenges, but I had my 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 eyes on the, yeah. on the book. Yeah. What is your satisfaction when you see this book? For me, the satisfaction is more and more people getting to read the book. For me, I get satisfied when someone calls me and tells me they're inspired by what they've read and they are fascinated by what they've read in the book. And there are people who even told me that they have changed their, it's changed their lives. So for me, what would even give me more satisfaction is more and more people reading it. Because for me, writing the book was not the, what I called the work. Getting people to read my father's story was what I, I considered the biggest work. Mm. Writing it was one, but actually getting people to read it yeah. was what I really wanted. Did you have like a moment of panic? You know, now the book is ready. I'm thinking, so who will buy? Um, <laughs> for, 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 for me, the, I, I would say some of the fear was, uh, I wasn't too sure, because it's an election year, yeah. I wasn't too sure how it will be looked at. You know, in terms of the politics of Kenya, because yeah. he's a politician. Yeah. But uh, so far, so good. The reception has been good. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent job, Bob. Mm, thanks. And I uh, wish you the very best with the launch. Asante. And of course, uh, more. But I think there are some things will feature feature wongeze we keep it up in Guinea. Because you know, you know, sometimes you have nothing much at work. You can't do. You can't do. Time but it's it's as tell with... all as you as you as you, as you, as you can get. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Very, 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 very lovely book. Everyone should get it. Everyone should read it. The book is called The Path to Kaliech. You can check it out. Very nice picture of a very younger William Odongo Omamo then. He was cabinet minister, both at Agriculture and Livestock and also for uh, natural resources. Natural resources, yes. Yeah. yes. He didn't like that move very much. Uh, Yes. The interesting part is that he was Minister of Financial Resources longer than he was in That's agriculture. It. Yeah. The move he didn't like was when he was made Minister for Research, Science and Technology. Yeah. That was his last ministry. That was like... Uh, Which not much, to, much is said about it. Yeah. He's remembered more for agriculture. agriculture. And Natural Resources was a sister ministry to agriculture, so yeah. Yeah. And Moi visited your farm. Hi, yeah, this book is very interesting. Yes, Moi was there. Yeah. Kibaki was there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Interesting tales you can read from that. He says the book is at uh, Nuria, it's at Prestige, it's at Textbook Center. Bookstop Yaya. Bookstop Yaya. Or you can reach Bob at Bob. Bob Omamo254 at gmail.com. Bob Omamo254 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. And for coming. Asante Sana. Wish you the best, man. Thanks. All right. That's it for 59 minutes today. Stay tuned for Leia coming up with Ilosu and have a great day.